In case you've never used track changes before when working with the Word document, I just wanted to really quickly show you how to turn it on, what it looks like and does, and also how to accept those changes and turn the document back into a regular Word document. So here you'll see uh, two images. On the left is a layout of what the ribbon at the top of Microsoft Word usually looks like, or at least it's similar to this on most Windows computers. On the right, this is how it usually looks on a Macintosh. And you'll see that there's a track changes button on the review tab of the ribbon both places. So you click first on review, and then you find the button for track changes and turn it on. The other way you can do that is by going to um, the file menu. Um, and that's also gonna look different from Word uh, to Word uh, program. But on my computer, it's under Tools. And if I open Tools, um, and I, sorry, I know I cut off the top of the screen here. But if I open Tools, I can turn on track changes that way too. So here's a sample document just with some filler text I have. This is some uh, rhetoric theory here. Um, so I'm just going to turn on track changes. And now whenever I add new text, so let's say I want a new topic sentence here. You can see that when I typed in new text just now, it appears in a new color and underlined. And that's just to bring your attention to it visually. You'll also notice that here on the left, there's a line, just to show you that there's a change somewhere on that uh, line. And you can see why that's useful when perhaps you're making no change bigger than adding or subtracting a comma. So you can see here that we get that line on the left here as well. And again, that's useful for drawing our attention just in case the change is small, then we can see exactly which lines do have some changes. Now you notice here, because I made a deletion, um, we don't have new red underlined text, but we do over here have a bubble that pops up and shows exactly what text got deleted. So here, if I deleted another line, and here I delete a couple words, we'll see those same words appear in the bubble deleted. Um, and you'll get a similar bubble if you make formatting changes. So here we can see that there was a formatting change. This is formatted to italics. Um, sometimes the view is set up a little differently. Um, and if so, you just got to go up to the tools menu or wherever it is that you can see some options for track changes. Um, so on mine, for instance, um, right now I have it with bubbles, but you can also, um, if I can click options here. And if I want, um, I can also change it so that, um, you know, deletions are a strike through, um, you know, so there's lots of options for changing how it looks. So if yours looks a little different than this, it just means you have to go to wherever your options are and configure them. And then you can kind of change how the track changes appear. But for most of you, the default should be that when you make changes, new text is a different color and formatting and deletions appear in these bubbles here on the right. So. The beauty of using this is um, if we're working with each other's writing, um, we can suggest changes. So you'll notice um, when I return feedback to you, if I'm ever suggesting small wording changes or moving things around, I'll use track changes because that gives you the ability to see exactly what I changed and to decide for yourself whether or not you're going to, going to accept that. Let's say I don't think that this should be italicized. Um, there are two ways to reject that change. One is that you could go over to this bubble and click the X, and you can see now that this is no longer italicized, it's rejected that change and changed, reverted this back to its original. Um, the other way I could reject it is by um, mousing over to the part in the text where the change happens. So see how there's this like little tiny arrow that appears right where the change happened in the text? You can also see it maybe more clearly here by the word pleasure. See how there's that little carrot a triangle kind of symbol. Um, if you go over and click next to it so that the change is highlighted, so that's not highlighted and that's highlighted. So you can see there's a dotted line and there's a solid line. Solid line means it's highlighted. Um, the other way to reject the change is by using this feature here. I've rejected that change. Um, if you don't want to mess with having to click to try to highlight the change you want to work with, you can click the bubble, you can click the text, but let's say you don't want to do that. These arrow keys that move between previous and next changes also allow you to move from change to change. Um, and when you get to the end, usually you'll get a bubble, a pop-up like this that asks if you want to continue at the beginning of the document. You can say no, you can say yes, it just moves you back. Um, so what you're going to want to do is um, after you're done working on track changes, 
is go through and accept your changes. If you are working with changes introduced by another writer, I would say as a rule of thumb to always go through the changes individually just to make sure that you agree with everything that's happened. If they're changes you've made yourself um, revising, you might want to quickly look over them, but it might also make sense to accept or reject those changes in batches. So if we accept a change, and I'll accept this one so you can see, now you can see that this change has been accepted and it looks just like the rest of the text, but whereas with reject, it disappeared, here it stayed. Right? And same here. So if I wanted this comma to be deleted, I say yes, that change is one I want to accept. I hit accept, and now the comma has been deleted successfully. Um, now let's say, I'll kind of go back here. Let's say I looked over visually all these changes, I found all of them, and I said I want to accept all of these. There is a drop down here. I can accept all changes in the document. Now all of the changes have been accepted, and you'll notice that the margin size changed here on this document. So if I go back a second, when we have changes, it kind of pops up this gray area on the right so that you can see the bubbles. And that's also one way to know that you have missed accepting a change somewhere because it still kind of looks like this. Once you've accepted everything and there are no track changes in the document at all, it goes back to this regular view. So that's one way of knowing. You can also reject all changes, just like you can accept all changes. So those are both options. Finally, um, and this is something um, that I find useful myself as a drafting tool, and obviously is useful if you are using track changes for peer review of some kind, um, you can also insert comments. And maybe you already know how to do this, um, but you just highlight the text you want to attach to the comment and hit new. And then to delete the comment, you either click the X or you click on the comment and then go over to delete up in the ribbon. And just like with changes, you can toggle between comments here with these arrows. You don't have to just click on them. So there's two ways to do that. Um, comments I find useful when I'm doing my own writing. Sometimes if I want to write a note to myself to remind myself of something. Um, so let's say I wanted to take a note because um, someone gave me um, you know, a comment that I thought might be useful. So, you know, so-and-so said that I should consider changing this first sentence. Sometimes I find that useful to be able to leave myself notes like that to remember and come back to later. Or, you know, reminder to self, double check spelling, or, you know, the citation or the page number or something like that. So I also find the comments feature useful for myself when drafting. Um, but again, that's just a really quick overview of how to use um, track changes. Um, don't forget, if you want to change it so that the document's no longer tracking every change you make, toggle track changes back off, and that will fix that. Um, and, and that's all there is to it.